Welcome to another STO PvP video. This time it's going to be a little different. I didn't write a script, and instead I'm just going to narrate while I'm testing these experimental weapons. I spent a good amount of time testing various abilities. The in-game tooltips, wiki, and parses aren't always accurate, especially when testing against other player ships, so this is the only way to verify the way some things work. I'm going to cut some of the fluff for the sake of brevity, but I'll try to keep the testing methodology and results intact. I'm also recording both sides of testing this time, so I'll put in some clips from the target ship as well when it makes sense to do so. If you don't want to see the testing in detail, I'll put a timestamp to skip to if you prefer to see a shorter summary. So that was the only thing that I wrote for this. Uh, let's just dive straight in. So right now I've got uh, two ships. My free-to-play dogfighter from the last video, uh, now on the Andorian Escort, and uh, my actual uh, main account dogfighter, um, which is obviously quite a bit further along. I stripped off some traits that would affect the testing. For example, uh, I was using Context for Kings, and basically after I fire my first shot, it would slowly increase the bonus damage, and it was kind of skewing the results, so I wanted to just show what we're doing here. So since we're testing all of the experimental weapons, I have them separated kind of into categories. So this top row on the left here, I have uh, radiation damage. So that's the Soliton Impeller, the Proto Matter Lace Sheller and the Alliance Hyper Cannon. Uh, at the top right, I have uh, physical damage, so that's the Agonized Subatomic Disintegrator and the Voice of the Prophets. Over here to the bottom left, I have kinetic damage weapons, so that's the uh, Experimental Kinetic Feedback Matrix, the Invasive Coil Gun, the Flak Shot Artillery, and Graviton Implosion Charges. And then on the right hand side, I have kind of the other types, the Phlogiston Projector, which is fire damage, and the Subatomic Field Disruptor, which is electrical damage. Uh, I didn't bother leveling up the Hyper Excited Ion Stream, which is also electrical damage, because it does even worse than the Subatomic Field Disruptor, and spoilers, this one is also terrible. And I also didn't bother leveling these up, but I grabbed them anyway just to show them the Gatling Emitter, which comes from the Da Vinci Escort. And I'm just going to explain why I didn't even bother testing that one. Not only does it do a minuscule amount of damage, but the way that it works. So after a three second lock on, it starts attacking your target. However, when you get placated, it starts the eight second recharge. So since most enemy ships are placating more than every eight seconds, basically if you're fighting someone in a 1v1, this weapon might never fire the entire fight because after that eight seconds, it takes three more seconds to lock on and start firing. And I, I guess I should demonstrate that just to show what I mean. So if I put it on, I'll put it on auto fire. So it's spooling up and it starts firing. So we're landing hits, but I mean, we're, we're talking minuscule amount of damage. I know it's not upgraded, but just as an example. And now if I hit uh, Ox Structural, it breaks it, and see now I'm waiting for the uh, for it to come off cooldown. Uh, and then another three seconds to spin up and then start shooting again. Uh, and you know by that time the other ship's already got Oxisive Placate back up and running again. So uh, it, it really, I mean, I've used it, I tested it, uh, before and it, it just straight up doesn't fire uh, in most PvP combat. The experimental hull spike battery came on the Appalachia, the T6 steam runner, and it does have something that's interesting. It does kinetic damage, but it ignores shields. So you would think, you know, that's maybe not too bad because it does uh, shield piercing, you know, kinetic damage. But it's got a very very slow travel time, and as you saw right there. Um, it just doesn't really... It, it just doesn't do a lot of damage. And let me show, um, since I can reclaim the uh, Graviton Implosions, just for example. Uh, the same mark of Graviton Implosions, for example, does 7400 damage at Mark 12, whereas the Hole Spike Battery at Mark 12 only does 1100. So Graviton Implosions does 7,000 more damage, and obviously it's resisted by shields, but the damage difference is just so huge between these two, I, I can't imagine. I mean, I think the only reason to run the whole spike battery maybe is if it's the only weapon you have, but I haven't even tested. The hyper-excited ion projector might even be better 
I'm not really sure, but it's not really worth testing. It's just, it's just not very good in this context. So, which kind of brings me to another point. There's a lot of weapons here that, you know, some of the, some of the best ones like the Soliton Impeller are great. PVP, PVE, doesn't matter. And I don't really understand why some of these weapons are so bad. Like, for example, and I know we haven't even really gotten into the testing yet, but the Agonized Subatomic Disintegrator, right? It does such an absurdly tiny amount of damage. 300 physical damage for a second for 15 seconds. And yes, it has a debuff effect, negative 15 to control and damage resistance rating. Uh, and that'll stack actually because, uh, because it fires. It lasts 15 seconds, the debuff, and you can fire it multiple times. So that's kind of cool. But the amount of damage it does is so absurdly low, I just can't imagine a reason why you would ever run this weapon. I mean, even the, the free ion projector, which is pretty terrible, is better than this. And, you know, the cryptic, the developers say they don't care about PvP or they don't want to balance for PvP or, you know, whatever, whatever the reason is. And that's, that's fine. But then why come out with a weapon like this that seemingly is balanced for PvP in a way, right? Like it negatively affects control and damage resistance of your target. That's a PvP thing. So the trade-off of having that great debuff is that it does much lower damage. So it just, it's bizarre, I guess, that they, you know, that uh, the general sort of sentiment is we're not gonna balance for PVP, but then they come out with something like this that originally came from a promo ship even, and it's this poor of a performer. It, it's just kind of kind of strange choices but okay so let's let's get into it and uh the first thing i'm going to do actually is uh, i do have the miracle worker spec on this free to play ship but i'm going to take concealed repairs off since it's running the competitive shield which also has a placate effect basically as soon as i attack it concealed repairs goes off and it starts healing so i'm going to take concealed repairs off and i'm also going to take uh whole image refractors off for right now just to kind of demonstrate something uh whole image refractors on my target ship is what causes uh, healing to overflow into temporary hull. Uh, so let's start with obvious good one, Soliton Wave Impeller. This is a great experimental weapon. If this is what you have and you don't have anything else on this list, just use this. Uh, I, most of these other weapons I don't have account unlocked. They're only on this character. And uh, my other PvP tune is uh, KDF and just uses the Impeller and I've never thought, wow, I wish I had something else because it, it performs amazingly. So I guess first things first is it says that the radiation damage it does is 100% shield penetrating, ignores shields. And uh, against the target ship right now, which is sitting idle and has no temporary hull, if I attack it, that hit 100% penetrated shields, uh, no problem. So it does, you know, pretty good damage, 5,000 per hit basically after resistances. Uh, something interesting that I also noticed is the trait, and I'll put this on my target ship here, uh, a popular trait in PvP to use sometimes is uh, Counter Stroke. And Counter Stroke is when you're affected by a control, you gain crit severity. And since there are so many controls in PvP, you pretty much get that crit severity uh, very often. Uh, and something interesting, uh, kind of uh, myth to be debunked, and maybe this worked at some time. The general rule of thumb is that the negative 9% speed and turn rate that the impeller applies to the target counts as a control effect for counter stroke, but it does not. So if I fire here uh, and we look at the other screen there, there is no counter stroke buff at all. However, if I use, say, um, uh, Forceful Inspection, which is a control, you'll see it pop up. See? There she is. Counter-Stroke. Uh, so this is a really good weapon. It does, uh, you know, a lot of damage. That 10% chance to do the uh, radiation damage over time is pretty nice. Um, and it, it's, you know, the, the shield penetrating ability of it is, is pretty good. Uh, I like it a lot. And there's there's that radiation damage over time, which is actually critting right now. So it's uh, that's pretty good. And interestingly, the uh, radiation damage over time that this applies does not get cleared by the uh, dot cleanse of Miracle Worker, 
Uh, my target ship has Miracle Worker as the primary spec, which uh, supposedly clears damage over time effects once every 30 seconds, but uh, for whatever reason does not work on the Soliton Impeller. So this is a great choice. Now one, one thing that's interesting about this is a lot of people, uh, and this is what I was talking about with tooltips, it says ignore shields. And if I put hull image refractors back on my target ship and uh, I activate some heals there so I get some temporary hull stacks, there we go. Uh, now if I attack, you'll see that the hits are being given to the temporary hull, uh, not the actual shield facings, but it's actually being recorded as shield damage. So these hits to temporary hull are being recorded as shield damage, even though this weapon says it ignores shields. And I actually have a uh, parse I can show. So this was a uh, 1v1 fight I had with a friend of mine, and if you take a look at this and uh, look at the... Uh, well, he was using the impeller as well, so we'll look at his. He did a lot of damage with the impeller, but it did 1,200 shield... or I'm sorry, 1.2 million shield damage. Uh, and then 560 to my regular hull, and this isn't actually shield damage. This is damage to my temporary hull, uh, which means a lot of this is a combination of shield damage and temporary hull damage because of the way that temporary hull shows up in a parse. Um, and I don't know if there's any way around that, to be honest. You know, I've seen other weird things in parses like this, for example. Um, the crit chance is over 100%. I don't see how that's possible. <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty weird especially since it shows non-crits. Maybe I'm just not understanding what this field means. Yeah, that's something to keep in mind if you're looking at a parse, is that it, it appears to kind of lie to you sometimes uh, in that manner. Uh, one other thing about it that's nice is the travel time is nearly instant. I'm gonna take the hull image refractors console off my other ship again, just so we can see pure hull damage numbers. That way it's a little, just a little more clear. Uh, okay, so let's uh, move on to the sheller. Now the, the Sheller, this is one of my personal favorite weapons. Uh, not only does it do a lot of damage, but if you're facing your target, it does 50% extra damage. And it's, it's only cat one increase, but it, it does add up and it definitely hits pretty hard. And it also fires two projectiles. So this, uh, the tooltip doesn't really show us that, but where it says at least X amount of damage and then it says 50% kinetic, 50% radiation, it's actually two projectiles that are fired like that. Um, and as you can see on my target ship, it wiped out that front shield facing almost immediately. I'm gonna turn around here, so uh, do a little lawnmower. There we go. All right, so now 100% uh, aft, uh, and the amount of damage is definitely less, but it's st still a lot of damage, but you can definitely tell that there's a drop off. It didn't wipe out the whole facing at once. Um, this, the Sheller is actually a really, really popular experimental weapon with vapors because they're going for, you know, absolute maximum damage. They're always going to be facing their target when they first make their pass. So if you have the Sheller and you're the kind of player that faces their target a lot, or you like to swoop in and land a big hit and then fly away, the Sheller is definitely a top-tier choice. I mean, the amount of damage it does and, uh, and the recharge time isn't too bad either. It's very, very effective. All right, so uh, moving on from the Sheller. Let's take a look at the other radiation damage weapon that we have, the Alliance Hyper Cannon. Uh, which, interestingly, the Hyper Cannon does quite a bit more damage than the other two at base value. And the recharge time on it isn't too bad either, but it doesn't have any special proc. You know, it doesn't penetrate shields like the Impeller, and it doesn't have the bonus damage when facing forward like the Sheller. But it, it's still pretty good, um, and I'll fire here and you'll see the... Uh, first hit there, almost 8,000 shield damage. Uh, this is pretty, pretty effective weapon, I think, especially for... Uh, a lot of people have this one because they own one of these Andorian or Lethian or Day One ships. So if, if, you know, if you have no other option, and it's just like on my other account, uh, the weapon that one's using. Also the Alliance Hyper Cannon, because that's the... Uh, what came with that ship. Uh, the biggest drawback to this one, and I'll kind of uh, come further away here to show this, it does have a lot of travel time. So if I fire, it takes a little while to get to the target. And uh, let me just compare here the travel time. So there's a shot from that. Put on the sheller, it's kind of like a medium speed shot, but it's definitely faster than the hyper cannon. 
uh, and then compare that to the Soliton, uh, which is nearly instant. Alright, so that covers our radiation options. All of those are pretty good. Uh, I think you could make a pretty effective build with any of those three. Next, let's do the physical damage. So, the Agonized Subatomic Disintegrator. Now, it does just awful damage, basically worthless. Even if it's shield penetrating, who cares? 300 damage is nothing. But the one advantage this does have is negative 15 to control and damage resistance, uh, and it does stack. So it kind of helps out all of your other weapons, and it also helps out if you have, say, a science ship on your team, because if they grab well someone and you knock 15 control off of your target, then everyone kind of benefits from that. So it, it's a good weapon to use in a team environment. Uh, I definitely know people who do use this weapon. At least a case to be made for it in PvP, but again, it's an, it, like I was saying before, they say they don't balance for PvP, but then something like this exists that has a proc that's super beneficial for PvP, and then they lower the damage to make it worthless in PvE, so what context would this be used for if not PvP? I just don't understand that. Anyway, uh, so I'll kind of show how it stacks. So here's our first shot there. Um, and I'll just kind of keep, uh, I'll keep it on auto fire, and you can see over on the other screen the uh, resistance rating uh, is going down. Right now there's three stacks, so our resistances were down there to 32% uh, for most of the energy types, and negative uh, 6% for radiation, which is pretty awesome. Uh, um, now if I stop firing and you'll see uh, those resistances kind of climb back up. And the last one drops off, and resistances are back to their sort of nominal amount, uh, 53%. So 53% to 32%, that's a pretty big difference. Um, I always like to do a little calculating for that. If you have, um, you know, say I landed 100,000 worth of damage, and the target had 53% uh, resist, uh, then they resist 53,000 damage, which means, uh, you know... I'm only doing 47,000 damage to them. Whereas if they had 100,000, if I do 100,000 damage and their resistance is only 32%, uh, then I'm actually doing 68,000 damage. So the difference between 47,000 and 68,000 damage is a lot in PvP. That's also why I think there's also a lot of um, general disdain for PvP. People don't understand how critical resists are. Uh, and how stacking more resist is so important. Uh, in the example I just showed where the damage resist was getting knocked all the way down to 32%, uh, I mean, look how much more damage you'd be taking if you got debuffed like that. So clearing those debuffs is definitely important, but another element of that is if your resistances get dropped, then having some traits on that further increase those resistances helps. Since I don't have any on the other ship right now, I don't have everything slotted the same way. So it dropped to 32%, but for example, uh, redirected armor plating, that trait adds 30 resist when you take any damage to anywhere besides the front. You know, and, and actually maybe we should test that uh, while we're here. I'm going to turn to the side, and let's see how low the resists get again if we stack. So there's uh, redirected armor plating, and uh, I'll just keep attacking, we'll see how low it gets. All right, three stacks. See, it, it, now it's at 39%. The lowest I can get it to is 39% instead of 32%, and that's entirely from a single trait, redirected armor plating. So the more damage resist you can stack, the less likely you are to suffer from a lot of debuffs. You know, a lot of players, um, uh, like I was saying in the video for this dogfighter here, um, which now has cold hearted, uh, if I stack a lot of resist, the negative 50 damage resist applied to me by Cold Hearted doesn't matter as much because I'm essentially over-capping my resists. Uh, so it's, it's critical not only just to have good resting resist, you have to keep adding more and more resist to deal with enemies that are using debuffs like Agonized Subatomic or other weapons which we'll get into here. Um, so that, that kind of kicks off our uh, talk about 
resist. And so that's a pretty interesting weapon. I wouldn't say it's the best weapon, but there's definitely a context where it could be really usable, despite the low damage. Uh, next, I'll put up Voice of the Prophets. Uh, Voice of the Prophets is a pretty popular weapon because uh, not only does it do a large amount of physical damage, it also affects multiple foes. So it's a good way to damage lots of enemies caught in a grab well, for example, which doesn't really apply as much in PvP. Like, yes, you want to be able to eliminate pets because a lot of pets, you know, can cause lag or some pets have special abilities like Viral Matrix or there's like Frigate Pet that have a scattering field. Um, there is some merit to wanting to sort of play some crowd control, but it's just such a small use case because you don't have your own gravity well on the ship, obviously. So what, you know, what good is a little extra uh, and the range of the additional damage is only two kilometers. So unless you're paired with a science ship on your team that's already sucking things into a gravity well or something like that, it just doesn't really merit a lot. Now, this is, I think, the highest single damage, at least according to the tooltip, the highest single damage weapon that I have here. But because it's physical damage and there's no shield pen proc or anything on it, it does pretty poor damage. I mean, there's the shot. I mean, look at that. 1700. Uh, and with a long uh, six second recharge. I mean, that's like, that's pretty bad. It just, it just doesn't affect uh, player ships in the way that it's effective in PvE, terrible in PvP. And, uh, and just like the hyper cannon, um, I think this might actually be the slowest of all the weapons. Um, it has a very slow travel time. Maybe that's about the same as the hyper cannon. That one's pretty much out, doesn't offer anything. There's nothing else to talk about, that one's really simple. Now let's talk about the kinetic weapons, and I'm actually gonna start with the Graviton Implosion Charges because this is one of the other best PvP weapons in the game. It's got a reasonably quick recharge time of four seconds. It does a pretty good amount of kinetic damage, not as much as the Voice of the Prophets, but this is again another weapon that kinda has a specific use case. It does not have any shield pen innate, you know, proc on it. So most of the damage does get resisted by the target. You can see that that hit, you know, it wasn't as bad as voice, but it's still not very good, despite the large amount of damage that it does, because shields just resist so much. And in PvP, you know, like I said, everybody's pretty much got their shields up all the time. Uh, anybody who's ever watched my videos and pays attention knows to have shield mastery, you know, which refills shields basically completely every 20 seconds. So most of the time in PvP, you're fighting an enemy with their shields up, uh, which kind of limits the use of this one. The one thing that it has really going for it is that negative 25 damage resistance rating. It also pulls enemies closer together, so it can help a little bit with the pet spam, but not too much. And another, I guess, myth to debunk, uh, and maybe this was true some time ago, but it's not anymore. Uh, apparently this weapon, when it came out and you attacked a target, uh, disabled their ability to activate Intel Team. Basically, if you attacked your target with this and they were using Exodus or Intel Team or whatever, they wouldn't be able to activate Intel Team for a certain amount of time. That's no longer the case. Can't show it exactly in this video because my target ship doesn't have an Intel seat, but trust me, I tested. It, it does not do that. So maybe there was a time when it was useful for that, but now it doesn't. The other thing is the damage resistance debuff falls off over distance. So I'm, I'm gonna get real close here. Uh, I don't think this weapon fires fast enough to get two stacks, or it doesn't stack, at least I haven't been able to get it to. Um, I'll try here though, but there's our first hit, resistance is down to 41% on the other side. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like it stacks, it just sort of refreshes. Um, but it is keeping my target down to 41%, which is uh, pretty good. Now, if I back off, let's say, uh, well, let's do five kilometers and then like nine something, so. All right, so like roughly five kilometers uh, from 53% standing. If I fire again, 41.4%. Uh, Doesn't really seem that different, does it? All right, let's, uh, let's take it further back, I guess. All the way back, let's get just barely in range. All right, 9.8 kilometers, 41.4. So I guess, uh, I guess that's kind of bugged then, or at least the amount of damage resistance fall off 
um, is some kind of absurdly tiny amount of fall off that it basically doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, the the one the biggest advantage of a weapon like this isn't necessarily that it's doing damage. It's that the debuff being applied improves the damage from all your other weapons. So if I had all my phasers uh, slotted, you know, then firing this weapon on target and then firing phasers would increase the amount of damage my phasers do to the target's hull. Um, so there's definitely some merit to that. Uh, I know a lot of people like this weapon in PvP. I've used it in the past. I think it's my on my default uh, loadout. I think that's the weapon I'm using right now. And uh, let's look at the flak shot artillery. So the flak shot artillery is the weapon you can get from the competitive reputation. Uh, it's actually what I used on my free-to-play build before I had the Andorian Escort. And basically it, it does some kinetic damage. It does have a little bit of shield penetration, 20%. But we're still talking very, very low amount of damage. Um, and it does have a little bit of a travel time. It's not terrible. It's another one that's kind of in the medium range. It's not instant, but it's not slow either. But I can't think of many reasons to run this unless you just have no other experimental weapon. Um, in which case, it is better than the uh, Ion Stream, the default one. But not really all that useful. Now there is one thing that's interesting about it. The secondary shots will hit pets. Uh, and they do hit decently hard against pets because uh, pets have terrible shields and dumb AI. So there is some, I guess, crowd control to this, but it's just, it's not very good. And I, I really think like experimental weapons in general probably deserve like a once over. Uh, balance pass to kind of uh, make them sort of side grades instead of direct upgrades. And, you know, you could say, well, you know, free weapons don't perform as well as paid weapons because they're trying to get you to buy expensive ships and so on and so forth, but the Agonized Disintegrator in PvE, which is what most people are doing, sucks, and that costs you a promo ship or a 10th anniversary bundle, so one of the most expensive weapons in the game is also one of the worst. So... I don't know if there's any logic behind that. Uh, there, there basically seems to be no rhyme or reason to the balance, which is, you know, sort of an overarching theme of a lot of stuff, but yeah. Um, now, one thing that is interesting about this weapon, for some reason, this weapon will fire on cloaked ships. And, you, you know, I'll actually, uh, I'll demonstrate that at the, I'll cut in a clip of that. Uh, okay, so now that we've got a ship with an intel seed in here, two things I wanted to demonstrate. First of all, uh, let's put Graviton Implosion charges on first. Um, and I'm just going to show, when I fire Graviton Implosion, you'll see, uh, no problem, can still activate intel team. Doesn't matter, doesn't do anything. Um, and I have pretty good perception on this, so I can still see that ship. Uh, even through intel team. Um, but yeah, it doesn't, doesn't deactivate intel team. No advantages, no reason to run it for that reason. Um, it's got other reasons, obviously, to use it, but that was a you know big tick in the pros column for that. It doesn't work anymore. So, flat cannon. So right now, that ship has intel team on it, and I cannot target it. But I'm attacking it, and able to land hits. Uh, let's do one more cycle here. Right, so I don't have enough perception to target that ship if it activates intel team. So if he activates intel team, the... Weapon still fires, as long as I'm hitting spacebar, even though the other ship is stealthed. So that's kind of interesting. I, I don't know why it works that way. Um, I also don't really think there's much advantage to that, because it, it does such little damage that it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, for whatever reason, the flak shot artillery will attack ships even if they're stealthed. Um, now, if there were a trait or something where, you know, attacking a ship under intel team would strip a buff, you know, then, like, that would that would be pretty cool. That'd be a pretty cool way to beat intel team if there was some trick to that, but it doesn't work like that. Just sort of, like, a weird, I wonder why that happens thing that I noticed during testing. Just another odd inconsistency. Um, and, and the same thing applies to cloak, so if I'm if I'm firing on the target... And they cloak. Alright, cloak, fire. Actually, it decloaked him, so I guess that's kind of useful. 
I wonder if this was intended to uh, decloak ships. I know when this came out, when competitive war games came out, all the Intel team spamming stuff wasn't as bad as it is now. Um, and you know that was back in the days where um, probably when they developed this uh, was you know this was early T6 era. Back then in PvP, uh, you know a Romulan ship would decloak behind you and just vaporize you with uh, rapid fire cannons or something. So adding a weapon that uh, fires on and decloak cloak ships was probably a cool idea uh, in the early days, uh, you know, of that era. But it doesn't make a lot of sense now. It just didn't age that well, I guess. Maybe you know another thing balance paths or something, maybe they could add some utility to this weapon. You know, like, disables intel team or disables cloak or something, put it on the tooltip, make it official. Okay, next up let's talk about the invasive coil gun. Uh, the invasive coil gun, uh, it does do some kinetic damage with some shield penetrating. Uh, it's actually a decent amount of kinetic damage, uh, especially for the uh, recharge time, which is uh, only every three seconds, so it's pretty fast. The other reason why this is a really good one in PvP is uh, every five attacks against the same foe takes their subsystems offline for a certain number of seconds and deals some electrical damage that completely ignores shields. Uh, every three seconds firing means also that five attacks against the same foe, that's every 15 seconds, right? So every 15 seconds, you're disabling all of their subsystems for a certain number of seconds, in this case 4.5. And, and let me take something off. I think that scales with uh, drain. Yeah, I don't have anything with drain expertise on my ship right now, but if you increase the drain expertise, you could increase the amount of time that subsystems are disabled. Uh, but of course, that's resisted by your target ship. And this is another reason why uh, in the last video I was talking about uh, making sure to run points in drain expertise. Because abilities like this that seem like it should be resisted by control are actually resisted by your drain, which is just really strange, but something to keep in mind. And uh, another nice thing about this weapon is it's another one of those very fast ones. The shot is nearly instant. Uh, and as you can sh see there, it actually pierced shields very, very well, uh, doing a lot of hull damage. So there's uh, a couple of hits against my target, um, and I'll, I'll kind of keep attacking. And there my subsystems are disabled for a while. A pretty decent amount of time there, so uh, so that that's pretty nasty, I think, if uh, you know timed right. And and this time, uh, I'm going to keep firing, but I'm going to be ready to activate my engineering team uh, this time. So if I lose subsystems uh, here on the next shot, and obviously I know when it's coming, um, but I can hit engineering team and immediately clear that um, that debuff. So another reason why just about every PvP build, you have to have both science team and engineering team on the build. You know, in combat, sometimes it's hard to balance when to use one or the other, but that was just an example. If you're affected by this weapon, just pop engineering team and it immediately clears it. So there is a, a you know, a hard counter to that weapon. Uh, so let's swap in our last kinetic weapon, the experimental kinetic feedback matrix. This weapon is awful. Uh, maybe the worst one on this entire list. I'd even say run Voice of the Prophets over this, even though Voice of the Prophets is terrible. It not only does a tiny amount of kinetic damage, but it also only has a 180 degree targeting arc. One of the only experimental weapons in the game with a 180 degree arc. So you would think it's just another one that's really perplexing to me. For it to have the limitation of a 180 degree arc and do such low damage, I just, I don't understand it. Um, but basically it fires like these little missiles. Uh, they kind of have a slow wind-up time, but they travel fast. Um, but the shot, uh, they sort of pop out to the side and then forward. So not only do they have a slow travel time, poor damage, they don't pierce shields. And, I mean, 10% extra fire cycle haste? Uh, it's, it's worthless. I, it's just a really weird... Yeah, considering this comes on the Dimos Pilot Destroyer, I mean, it's embarrassing. Uh, and I know the Pilot Destroyer also comes with the Phaser Lance, and the Phaser Lance is awesome. But, uh, wow. I mean, even with the shields down right there, it only did 2,700 damage. It's just not a very good experimental weapon, so if you have that, don't bother using it. It'd be better to slot nothing. Definitely probably the worst one on this list besides the ones I'm not even testing. 
Uh, okay, so let's go to the sort of other damage types, and I'll start with the Phlogiston Projector. Uh, this one is very interesting. It has a 4 second recharge, and it does fire damage. Fire damage is interesting because it doesn't show up on our list of resistances. So it's kind of hard to tell what resists fire damage, if anything. Uh, and it seems to do a lot of hull damage. Now here at 3 kilometers, we're not getting the best out of it. Um, but if I can get the hull down, I know it does a lot of damage to the hull from some past experimenting. Uh, so let me just do that really quick. It's hard because the other ship has immersion due to shields up. Uh, there we go. So with the shields down. Oh, of course. <laughs> I guess let's keep the cycle going there. There we go. So shields down. Land a big hit here. 8,500 hull damage. Uh, that's you know that's that's pretty good. I, I don't think that's resisted very well. Um, you can see here the uh, base damage to the hull damage. Uh, the difference is not very far. Um, that's only, you know, 25% being resisted. And some of that is from the shields. So I, I think uh, even with resistances, you know, pretty high on my target ship, it doesn't, it doesn't get resisted very much. Um, now I think, like, all resist things, like uh, traits that do all resist, probably resist this a little bit better. Um, but this can be a surprisingly effective weapon. Now, um, the one drawback is... It does have pretty sharp damage drop-off, so uh, let's see, for the sake of science, let's unequip the shields on the target ship. And I'm going to go to, uh, let's say, 4 kilometers. We'll land a hit. Alright, so that's uh, roughly 8,000. Let's do a second one, just so we have a, another value. Oh wow, much higher that second time there. Let's do one more. Alright, so there's our, there's our spread. Let me drop way back. Uh, nine kilometers, and if I fire from here, uh, wow, look at that. That drop-off is abysmal. I mean, we're talking about doing, you know, roughly eight or nine thousand to barely breaking a thousand at longer range. So it, it's one of those weapons, if you're a really good pilot and you can stay really close to your target, if you're the kind of dogfighter where you're constantly at close range um, and you have that skill, then by all means, put this weapon on. Uh, when the enemy's shields drop, it does a ton of damage. It's just, it's very good for that specific use case. And uh, a lot of people have this because Plasma Storm is really popular and uh, this comes on the Maquis Raider. So it's, it's definitely worth slotting for that sort of situation, but it's very unique. Uh, Subatomic Field Disruptor from the Earhart Strike Wing Escort. Alright. So that's got a... 4 second recharge. It does 11,000 electrical damage, but it's a damage over time. And it spreads to other targets, which is basically worthless in PvP. There's our hit. Man, the shields... I didn't even equip shields on the other ship. Uh, and you can see Miracle Worker uh, removes that damage over time effect. So the damage from this weapon basically gets negated by Miracle Worker spec every 30 seconds. But even if it didn't, I mean, I guess it's nice that it stacks like that, but wow. And we'll, we'll just see how bad it's resisted by shields. Oh yeah. I mean, that's like, that looks like ground combat damage, that's how low it is. Yeah, so that's that's basically worthless. All right, so if we uh, if we had to do some rankings, I would say uh, probably the best is maybe a tie between the uh, Impeller and the Sheller. Uh, I love both of those weapons. I do have kind of a soft spot for the Sheller, even if it doesn't always beat the Impeller. A and the Impeller, if you look at a lot of PvP parses, the Impeller will be right at the top, and that's because it does the same damage in any direction, any time. So it's just, you know, it's very, very good. The Sheller kind of depends on your ability to stay on target. Um, raw damage and DPS in PvP doesn't matter that much. I mean, let me just show, uh, if I bring up my combat meter and... and um, but this was kind of a 1v1 we had. We're both in pretty top tier PvP ships. Um, this is my uh, KDF dogfighter, which uses the Salaton Impeller. Uh, and you can see... Uh, he had five deaths, and I only had two, so I won this fight. However, I had far more damage in because I did more damage to the hull. 
Uh, and if we look at this result, uh, and I'm not uh, picking on anyone, but the impeller was his top damage. And, uh, and that does mean that I kind of... The, basically, if the impeller is top damage, then that means it was firing a lot when we weren't facing each other. Uh, and mine, uh, it's also near the top, so we weren't facing each other a lot of this fight. Because a lot of times, you'll fly past someone, your impeller will fire out to the side or behind, and if the sheller does that, then the sheller loses, right? The impeller is better than the sheller in that situation. But in that initial, like, lead up to the attack, which is how you normally score kills, is when you have all of your weapons facing the target. That's where the sheller really excels. Uh, next, I would probably put the uh, Graviton Implosions and the Subatomic Disintegrator and the Invasive Coil Gun. I'd put all those three about equal um, because they each have kind of a situational thing about them. You know, the uh, Implosion Charges has a debuff, but the damage it does is really only amplified if your target shields are down. So this is great. This is a great weapon to use if you're in a team and your teammates are helping you knock their shields down. Agonized Subatomic Disintegrator is great if you're paired with like a science ship or a control ship because it really helps in that situation. And same thing with Invasive Coil Gun. I mean, uh, a well-timed subsystem disable, especially all subsystems like it does, uh, might mean a kill. So, you know, that's, that's pretty sweet. The Hyper Cannon I would put kind of in third uh, just because it's got a little slow travel time but it does do a lot of damage and it's, you know, Considering the reasonable price of obtaining it compared to all these other ones, which are all, you know, event or lockbox or whatever, uh, this is probably the best one available in the Zen store uh, for budget PvP build. Uh, and then I, I put the Phlogiston right alongside it because the Phlogiston, another one, super situational. But uh, these other ones, these are good if you're a bad pilot or a good pilot. Any three of these are effective at helping your team out, right? Um, the Flautiston, if you're a, you know, a pilot and you struggle to maintain the range against your target, it's awful. But if you're a good pilot, or your enemy is a bad pilot, either way, <laughs> um, then it can be one of the better weapons to use uh, because of that. So it, it really it depends so much on the situation. Um, that that one really, um, skill factor weighs in a lot on as to whether or not you'd get good use out of that weapon. So yeah, that's, uh, that's all the experimental weapons and, uh, that I have available at least. Uh, I don't have proton charges or uh, I didn't bother upgrading an ion stream projector. Uh, I'm, I think I'm missing a couple of other ones, but uh, these are the key ones that you would want to use in PvP. So uh, hopefully this helps someone. Saved them some time testing when they, uh, you know, don't have to now. And uh, I plan to do a couple more of these. Um, I know this one being kind of off the cuff isn't as uh, structured as my other videos, but I just kind of wanted to get the, the content out there, sort of help people out. So uh, thanks for watching, and have a good one.